All right, Bob and Steve have been hassling me enough. It's time for a new video. Have you ever found some local crap in your classifieds? You're like, I gotta have this. Well, this is what I found. Wireless transmitter for composite. And it'll take audio as well. See that red there? That's awesome. It says, careful, defect, counterfeit. Is this the counterfeit one? It came in this box. Uh, and inside what you get are these two transmitters. And if I do a little close there, you can see, yep, it's gonna take that in. And on the back, it's taking power, power pass through. Uh, they want this to be used with multiple. Like there's four channels, I guess you can use up to four. And then this one here is set to channel four on the back. Uh, also the manual is amazing. Uh, apparently there are versions of this can go a thousand, two thousand, three thousand feet. Uh, I've got the 100, but the, the text, it's just a wall of text. I'll, I'll give you a sample. As carrying on entering AV signal in transmitter, AV signal after modulating enlarged by 2.4 gigahertz signal C by carrier frequency power amplifier transmit out through the aerial. Okay. This is worth the five bucks alone. So I'm gonna test all of this now. I'm gonna test, does it work? Does it degrade the quality at all? How about the audio? I'm gonna try it through a wall into another room about five meters away. And what I really wanna know is if this is, does it treat audio differently? Because if it doesn't, then can I send component over this thing instead? Look, I got nothing to do today. Let's make this video and have some fun. So the way I'm gonna test is I've got my nine inch BVM here. So rather than always using the mister, I have a one chip. Super Famicom. This says nine to 12 volts, but the manual says nine. Firstly, power. I've worked out that it needs exactly nine volts, less than, a, less than an amp, but doesn't take five, doesn't take 12. Now this is connected directly up. This is 100% pure, original Nintendo composite cable. Let's try and connect it up for the first time. Transmitter. Receiver. Gets power, gets a light. And let's try into there. And how does it go? Oh shit, it works. Wow, it's there. How does it look? I gotta look myself. Ooh, ooh, it's not looking good. I like composite on a BVM because they balance each other. BVM very sharp, composite bit blurry, and they meet somewhere kind of nicely in retro nostalgia land in the middle. There's definitely signal loss. I'm not sure yet whether it's treating 480i as 240p. I think it's not like the Chinese guys are suddenly cottoned onto 240p for audio and video stuff. Uh, there is a loss in quality. It's not too bad, but you probably, maybe you won't notice it on a consumer set. Maybe that's it. So let's continue on. This is going directly into my recorder. Also, this is a different cable. My uh, original Super Nintendo Composite cable left audio doesn't work. It took me 20 minutes to work it out. So I'm using this S video cable here. This is from the Foo off eBay. Very well sh shielded cable. This is the original audio. Straight into the recorder. This is the same scene on R-Type 3 through the transmitter. I haven't changed any recording settings. It's much lower. You can hear a hiss. It's not as clear. Sorry, this is not done well. Our transmitter is not looking good today. It hasn't passed the audio test, hasn't passed the video test. Who'd have thought for five bucks it's not working. One thing I quickly like to check is does composite work over the left or right audio. I've got it currently working over the transmitter and now I'm gonna plug it in to use right audio instead. So that goes out, transmitting now right audio and we don't get nothing. So it seems like audio and video are encoded differently as the manual in its Chinese English would kind of imply. And if we go back to the yellow port, a little bit of rolling, see that, this sort of sync is that me? Is that the device? I don't know what this thing's doing. Why is it rolling? God, I don't know. I'll try it again. Settle Colin. I don't know. This thing's a heap of junk. I don't know what's going on. Why am I spending my day doing this? Who does this? Why am I outside of the sunshine? This is back direct without the transmitter. No rolling. Yeah, it's a, it's a heap of junk. Now I've got the Super Nintendo out in my kitchen and it works. Still got this kind of weird flashing or flickering going on. If I take a look at the screen myself, it's... 
Well, the flickering, it's not much worse than it was before because it was already pretty crap. So I'd say it's kind of working to my kitchen. So there we have it. This thing isn't good as you would expect. I'm not, you know what? I'm not going to test component because I tried composite through the left and right audio and it didn't work. It clearly is modulating and encoding audio differently to video. So we know components not going to work. It does work through walls when it works. So right now I've, I've switched the channel to channel three and it's reasonably stable and the picture is not too much worse than direct. There's definitely still the audio buzz that's coming through, but it's also not a reliable device. Like if I start just, and I know this could be my power and this is certainly not a scientific test, but it's not something you need to be interested in. That's all we have determined today with this test. I don't have my time sleuth right now, so I'm gonna um, get that back from Vlad. It's his time sleuth, but you know, hey, respect. And then I'll give this thing a go just to see how it is. But interesting device. Glad I bought it for five bucks. Thanks for watching and just letting me fart around on a Friday afternoon testing out this stuff. Uh, please join into the Cathode Ray podcast with Steve and I. We really enjoy your feedback. We really enjoy talking to different guests and, and, and building the community around our faithful CRTs. See you next time.